This is part two to my coverage of the Winter Forge training event hosted by SNS Training Solutions with the help of the Light Fighter Studies Group. Part one of the video focused on the first day's events, which mostly consisted of periods of instruction and practical application over operating in a cold weather environment. In part two of this video, we will highlight the 24 hour field training exercise that took place on day two of the Winter Forge training event. Day two started off bright and early. If you watched part one, you may have noticed that a significant amount of snow has melted. This is because in the late afternoon on day one, the sun came out and the temperature actually rose above freezing, which started melting the snow, which is quite disappointing. But don't let that fool you, it's still bitterly cold out here. Next was morning chow, followed by a brief from our patrol leader on our mission during the FTX. All right guys, so, um... We are the OPLF, that's the Ozark People's Liberation Front, uh, so just remember that. Our situation is the OPLF has largely been driven from nearby cities of Olin and Brumley by GNA forces. OPLF forces are reconsolidating to the local AO. All right, so we're in a reconsolidation phase. Uh, the mission is gonna be to establish a patrol base for follow-on operations within the AO. So obviously, you know, we already got stuff set up from yesterday. Uh, but we're going to need to improve what we have out there and kind of see what's around us and um, try to use the terrain to our advantage. And I, I think I have some ideas of, of how we can do that once we get out there. Um, commander's intent. Uh, the purpose is to establish presence in NAI Tiger. And so I do have maps that are coming in just a second. So you guys will see um, what that, uh, that AO looks like. But we are... Establishing a presence in Tiger uh, and then waiting for follow-on operations. All right So the uh, this white area is going to be off-limits So this is essentially the fob. We're probably right here on this road somewhere. And so you can see um, This pink highlighted area is our, our AO. So that is AO animal. All right, our patrol base is uh, right about here Okay with an NAI Tiger Okay over here. We've got NAI lion and then Jaguar, all right? So we've got three different um, known areas of interest out there. And where are we at or, right sorry, now? Or sorry, named here? areas of interest. We're here and we're Yeah, we're there. right up here on the road. Gotcha. Right. And so um, basically whenever we step off, we will, we will take the same route that we took yesterday, all right? And we'll come right up into here. And from there, we'll get our security going and we'll get a rest cycle going, all right? Make sure we get some guys some hot beverages. Um, and then just make sure you guys, um, again, I know we talked about it. Make sure you're looking at your buddies and don't, don't try to be a hard ass. You know, if you feel like you're starting to go down, I, I want to know about it. The team leaders need to know about it too. So we can get it addressed early and, and, and get you fixed back up. All right. Any questions? After receiving our order, we began to stage our gear for pre-combat checks and inspections. Our patrol was broken into two separate fire teams. One led by me as a fire team leader and the other led by Bruce. Additionally, we had a squad medic who carried the God Gun, which was capable of resurrecting us at designated times if we were killed. Once inspections were complete, we stepped off, officially beginning the FTX. For this FTX, we would be operating out of the bivouac site that we had established on day one. Only this time, there would be an actual enemy op for operating in the area. All right, guys, early morning, kicked off the FTX. We uh, stepped off from the FOB. We moved, made movement to our patrol base site. Right now, my fire team, Alpha team, is setting in security, and Bravo team is uh, back at the hooch, and they're doing all the finalized uh, things associated with that, getting that hooch up and running, like setting up the stove and getting that tent heated. Uh, so right now, we're just standing by, waiting for orders from higher, and uh, prepping our patrol base. While my fire team was providing security, Bruce's team was busy plussing up the bivouac site by lining the Arctic tent with pine needles for additional insulation. It wouldn't take long, however, before we were tasked with a mission by hire. So, the situation is uh, we've been requested to do an area reconnaissance in the vicinity of a short strip airfield in order to develop a more defined defensive posture for follow-on activities, okay? Um, so you and Luke, two-man team, will conduct area reconnaissance of objective RAT, which is this airfield right here on the map, okay? Our approximate location right now is right here. 
um, what you guys are going to be doing is trying to develop priority intelligence requirements for follow-on activities. Okay, so things that you're looking for, um, key terrain features. All right, high-speed avenues of approach. That also ties into passable river crossing. So if we do have to do an ambush on this airfield, how are we going to get our guys across? How are we going to get them back? All right. So something to think about there, and then possible possible ambush sites. That could be for us. That could be for them as well. So look at both sides of the coin. Um, avoid the minefields, which you can see right here. Um, it's really not anywhere in the direction you guys are going, so you'll be fine with that. Um, maintain a high level of readiness, and make sure we're maintaining communications with hire. So you guys will have the RF-10 radio, um, so you guys will need to um, have your SOI, which uh, I'll give you guys a copy of that. And so I want you guys to radio back to here and then we'll uh, send it back up to hire. If you guys cannot make comms with us, then just go directly to hire. Um, so you guys will step off at 14.15 uh, and approximately take about two hours, okay? So um, about 16.15, um, we should be expecting you guys back, all right? So if you guys um, hit contact, um, I want you guys to bound back here, all right? If we hit contact, you guys will just continue on with your mission, all right? Unfortunately, I didn't get any good footage of the recon side. mission because right during the middle of it, we ran smack dab into an enemy fire team and were subsequently killed. Once killed, we returned back to the bivouac site and were resurrected. But we could not speak to anything that had happened out there on the recon patrol because we were simulating being combat do? replacements for those that were lost. Uh, Thus, it was left up to the patrol leader to figure out what had happened. Out. We'll take a different route. That's what we need right there. Okay. Right, so behind us is the fog. That direction is the creek that runs to the south. Mm -hmm. All right. So these guys, they went out kind of behind us in that direction, down through here, the plane was to try to kind of skirt this tree line right here and then get eyes on this airfield right here to do recon. Okay. So I'm assuming that somewhere in here or down on here is where they got lit up, all right? Mm -hmm. So um, what we need to try to do is put together a new team and maybe come up with a different angle of approach to try to get eyes on that. Um, we really don't have much intel too. So the wide area is off limits. Right, that's so all the fog right there. So we kind of got to bounce this way, right? Yeah, so basically we've got two options. We can kind of hug this tree mm -hmm. line here and try to get eyes on from this direction. Or we could try to stay in these cedars and come down and try to get eyes on that direction. Okay. That's going to offer us more, more um, concealment. All right. So that's probably the best option because really... Um, we could probably stay in the cedars all the way down there and really, you know, we can skirt the tree line, make sure we really don't get out in the open field here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think from here we should be able to get eyes on this objective. Okay. Okay. So, um, what, you want, you, what do you want to do an emergency um, rally point if we take contact? Uh, well, we, we could do an emergency rally point at Rick, and we could do an emergency rally point at Morty. It's just going to depend on how far out we get, right? Yeah, we'll find some good train features I on think the way. That, that'd be tell, me, tell me, tell um, me, 4850 is Rick, Easting Line, and then Easting Line 487 will be Phase Line Morty. Um, so you'll grab the RF-10 radio, and you'll call them <coughs> whenever we get there. We'll do a security halt, and we'll have you just call in to um, Parker Kilo 21. Um, this is Kilo 21. Uh, we'll call you uh, Bravo. Uh, that that doesn't make sense because you're a Bravo team, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, Romeo, you'll be the RTO. So, Kilo 2 1 Romeo. Um, and then just say, he'll say, go ahead, and you'll just say, um, Rick. He'll say anything else, just Rick, and he'll understand. So, go ahead and uh, practice that right now. After losing the first recon team, the patrol leader subsequently decided to punch out a second recon team, only this time from Bruce's fire team, in order to continue the mission passed down by hire. Only this time, the team would take a different route than the last one. My fire team, along with the remain behind from Bruce's fire team, would take over security at the bivouac site while they were out. This also gave me a great opportunity to be the very first one to try out a brand new field expedient shitter that we built. 
All right, guys, about to christen this field expedient shitter. All right, the sun's starting to go down, so uh, pretty uneventful day so far. We established our patrol base. We kicked off one recon patrol after we were tasked with Meyer, checking out a uh, named area of interest. That recon patrol ran smack dab into an enemy fire team. Um, the whole recon patrol was killed. I was on it. I was able to get at least one of them though, uh, but they definitely uh, got the upper hand. So that recon team was killed. Um, we came back to the patrol base, got resurrected. We weren't allowed to pass any of that information to the uh, patrol leader. However, uh, they pretty much put two and two together based on what they heard transpire and what the, uh, the location of the, lead, the recon team prior to uh, being killed. So. We have a fairly good understanding of where the enemy AO is definitely at. So, um, yeah, the sun's going down. Should get start getting interesting here in a minute. Both sides have a decent amount of MVGs and thermal optics. So, so where did we step off from? Right down here, right there. We're, We're down, down here. here. Yeah. Pushed up, kind of drifted that way, got almost to there. Yeah. Before we, before we came back. Yeah, because we went north and then we decided we cut back east. Made our first call at 48.5. We hadn't seen anything at that point. We kind of pushed back a little bit closer to this tree line on yeah, the south of the Worked our way around the tree line. That was, yeah. that was a goal anyway. And we worked our way around here. And at some point, where's the, where's the little pond at? Uh, back here. here. So back, we were just north of the ponds and we ran into that dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was a dog. We thought... I was I was worried that it was going to be following us, but he brought a good point that it might have been sitting with them. You know, it's tagged on to us before. I really yeah. felt like that. Yeah. <laughs> I I it bet was it wasn't. Good. We didn't run into them, but man, we were really. You said you saw two heat signatures though. Okay, and I did. He did. And yeah. what did we find out it was? It was, uh, it was little Foo Foo Bunny again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to use that hand and arm signal again. Shortly after Bruce's team returned <laughs> from the recon mission, so, yeah, he subsequently received another mission from Hire pertaining to capturing a down enemy pilot in RAO. Get down a little closer so you can see the map here. All right, you're good. All right, so this is our approximate location right here. All right, so our situation is we have a downed pilot in NAI Jaguar. All right, so that is this whole entire area right here. All right. Our mission is to move to recover the pilot uh, for interrogation. Okay. Our execution is going to be sending out um, the entire element. We're going to move from the uh, patrol base in a southeasterly direction across this creek and we're going to do a seals halt right here on the uh, the junction of this tree line in this field all right we will pop an IR chem light right here and um, that's going to be our ambush when we come back so we'll have a back trail ambush so after we complete whatever we do out here we come back um, Bravo team which is you guys will be setting in an ambush right there all right so what it's going to look like is um, We'll get to this point initially, and then we'll start to push up the tree line. We'll do another seals halt up here and see what we can uh, view from these different vantage points. All right. Um, if we identify that the pilot is out there, Alpha team will be the recovery team. Bravo team will pull security. All right. And the train's going to kind of dictate how that's going to play out. Um, if we if we can't identify the pilot and we identify enemy forces, we're going to do a movement to contact. All right. If we don't identify either, we will complete a full sweep across this field. All right. We stepped off from the bivouac site with our whole patrol. There was next to no ambient light. Even with my PVS 14s, it was still pretty challenging to see in the environment. We had very little intelligence on the downed pilot. All we had was a general area where he was believed to be shot down, which encompassed several hundred meters. One thing I figured though, is that the enemy pilot might have an IR strobe going off, trying to signal his position for his rescue. After about an hour into the mission, I turned out to be exactly right. I spotted an IR strobe going off in the tree line. 40 meters. Direct front. After informing the patrol leader of what I observed, Bruce then came up next to me and began to scan the tree line using his thermal optic. Elements be advised we have one 
a male, one male directly, 40 meters in front of us. One to ten. Duck, get him. All right. We got him. We're uh, taking him in custody. Security setting up. Duck. After securing the enemy pilot, we then began to retrograde back to our bivouac site. Bruce's team, however, was left to set up an ambush on the flashing IR strobe. We figured that the other team was probably tasked with recovering the pilot. We wanted to ensure that we had someone there to greet them if they showed up. However, Bruce's team hit the drop dead time before the enemy ever showed up. That team then made its way back to friendly lines where we made link up via IR flash sequence. Upon returning back to our bivouac site, we then received a new mission from Hire set to take place the next morning. This mission would ultimately be linking up with the president of our country and escorting them to a meeting location that would take place on the airfield that was the objective of our reconnaissance mission earlier in the day. All right, so here's the situation, guys. Uh, due to OPLF forces sustaining significant losses on multiple fronts, OPLF leadership has opened diplomatic negotiations with Udon to enter into the conflict on the OPLF side. As part of the negotiations, Udon has claimed a wonder weapons breakthrough that could theoretically change the course of this war in the OPLO, OPLF's favor. A schematic of the new suite of weapons has been provided in this intelligence brief. Facing few other options, senior OPLF leadership have agreed to Udon's demands of an in-person meeting to discuss details of a cooperation treaty. Udon leadership is now en route to meet with senior OPLF leadership at a short, short air, airstrip outside the regional capital of Brumley. So, the mission is our uh, element will provide a security detail for the OPLF leader for the upcoming meeting with Udon leadership. Alright, um, there's a bit of a frago. We were initially going to have a vehicle transport. Uh, it's now going to be a foot transport. So, um, we're going to be moving on foot to that objective. Um, so, we'll move to the airstrip, establish a security bubble to protect the OPLF executive team. And if we're engaged by enemy, uh, we will exfil. Um, the OPLF executive west to PL Penny and await for reinforcements. So there's probably going to be some sort of, you know, asset that we're going to have to move with us. Um, so that's something that we need to take into consideration. Um, looking at those high speed avenues of approach that we identified yesterday. Um, so they want us to depart no later than uh, 0730. I'd like to step off by 0630. Um, we need to be at the or airport hangar no later than 0800, which is definitely doable. And uh, we need to establish and maintain a security bubble between 830 and 9. All right. Um, casualties will be collected by embedded med tech. That's you, Cole. Um, and our rules of engagement have changed a little bit, so we're free to engage any and all threats. After a few hours of shut-eye, hot wets, and guard rotations, the whole patrol was stood up in preparation to move out early. We then made our way to the FOB, which was simulating the hangars for the airfield. Once at the hangars, we linked up with the president and began to escort him to the meeting location. Now clearly, meeting a dignitary from a hostile foreign nation in the middle of a big wide open field has disaster written all over it. 
So as you can imagine, we all figured that all hell was going to break loose any moment. However, to our surprise, nothing ever happened. The foreign dignitary did not show up, and neither did the hostile forces. Because the enemy failed to show, we were then given a frago on the possible location of the enemy's bivouac site. We then set out to try to locate it and subsequently destroy them. However, we didn't have to wait too long, because shortly after we stepped off, we ultimately made contact with them, culminating in one final quick, violent skirmish. Contact! I'm hit! I'm hit! Well, that was it, guys. That concluded the FTX of the 2021 Winter Force Training Event. As short as the FTX was, got a hell of a lot of good training value out of it in operating in a cold weather environment. The last thing on the agenda was an AAR before cleaning and turning in all our gear. With us, because I think we should go ahead and while we're turning stuff in, start cooking, do an AAR, and then go get our stuff. Okay. Um, we're gonna knock out a, a quick <laughs> AAR. Um, I like focusing this uh, AAR winter forge just on cold weather stuff, just like we did last year. Um, not so much of, you know, how I planned the patrol and, and you know, we did this or did that. Um, only if it pertains to how it affected um, your tempo as far as cold weather. Um, and, maintaining your readiness in that fashion. Um, we'll let Bates lead the way since uh, he's impartial and wasn't there. Um, and he'll just take us through. Um, we'll, we'll talk about Saturday um, since that's a, um, a new addition to this event. Um, um, I'd like to get just a little bit of feedback on that because um, we want to improve that as everything else for next year. Bates? Thank you. Awesome, guys. Appreciate everybody coming out here. Uh, I guess uh, show of hands, how many folks came out for the previous Winter Forge. Awesome, so a lot of, a lot of returning folks, a lot of new faces. Um, I just kind of want to, you know, key in on what Cole was talking about, essentially, uh, you know, the focus of this event is to hone your guys' skills and introduce you to cold weather operations. And I think that's uh, a lot of the, the key takeaways from this weekend. It wasn't so much a shooting weekend, um, it was a hone in on your field craft because I'll tell you what, historically going back, cold weather injuries kill damn near as many people as bullets. All right, so sustaining yourself, sustaining your battle buddies, it's key, key task, right? So I wanted to just kind of go around and ask some of these folks, maybe some of the returners first, go around and see what kind of key tasks and things like that, the knowledge that you have built upon and also your experiences running, you know, over the course of this weekend, of uh, things that are good for you, things you need to improve on. So, anybody who uh, has been here before or did another Winter Forge, you want to talk? I'll start it up real quick. Awesome. <clears throat> the Equix system, I didn't know anything about last year. Now I do, and it's helped me tremendously. I okay. froze my ass off last year. <laughs> I mean, it was. But it was five degrees, you know. It was a good test for the winter forge. But okay. So it, f familiarization with your equipment? Yes. Layering, things of those nature? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's awesome. That's a good takeaway. Next. Anybody? Uh, yeah, something I picked up from, you know, being at OC with Jackson's guys last year uh, is just the, the sustainment stuff in terms of food and the, the hot liquids. Um, you know, I, I hadn't really done any cold weather training like that. <clears throat> In the summertime, you know, you just do MREs and, you know, granola bars and you're fine. And um, I think, you know, the other patrol last year thought that they were going to be able to get by on that and, and found out that's, that's not going to be enough. So, you know, I learned a lot from being embedded with you guys and uh, was able to transfer that stuff into our patrol. And I think it, it you know, helped sustain the morale. Yeah. So, Psychological factor yeah. is big to it, man. Keeping your mind in the game. You know, if you guys are getting run down, you're not going to be combat effective. You're going to curl up. And turtle 
So if you guys are getting like hot liquids, hot chow, something to pick up the morale, you know, be it a tea or you know a lozenge or something like that, just to you know pass pass the suck it goes a long way. You know. Tyler, can you talk about yeah, and the that, ration portion of it? Well, what I what I would say to that is, look, so one of our jobs as a leader. Uh, especially in cold weather operations, is to uh, check on our guys constantly, right? Like we we pair up in the army and in the military in battle buddy teams. Um, part of the first aid class and safety was uh, signs and symptoms before injury. Well, how do you know guys are are going to get to that point? Well, you're constantly doing welfare checks. One of the best ways to do it is to make sure everybody's getting brought in to eat. If you see a guy that's lethargic and he's like slow to get his mess tin, slow to hang around and eat, that's a sign. That's, whoa, hey, everybody else is popping and popping. This guy's a little slower, what's going on? And sometimes it's that isolation effect that happens with the cold, you start, you start cocooning. Those are the early symptoms before somebody's gonna become a cold weather casualty. So ration plans allow the leaders to look around and go, yes, every, every eyes are open, people are talking. That's a good thing. Those are all signs that people are up and, and, and coherent. Uh, if you got one or two guys that are kind of, you know, slugging around, that's a bad sign. You need more water. You need more food. Or you probably need also rest. So, so those are all times. One of the reasons why we do group meals when we can, a few guys on security, most everybody else come in, then we rotate. And it's not just, you know, go hide and make your own personal meal. It's make a personal meal next to me. So, yeah, uh, it, it's a critical thing in the cold uh, for, for morale. It's psychological effect, too. It's like not just by yourself, right? So. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're interested in more cold weather training videos, stay tuned. I got more coming down the pipe. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment.